Welcome to Let's Think About It with Advocates Protecting Children. I'm Maria Keffler. I'm Erin Brewer. I'm May Lyle. What are we going to talk about today, May and Erin? Well, we're going to talk about the term cisgender, cis woman, and trans woman, and how um, dangerous using those terms are. Um, it struck me, I have a cat who is likely to um, come into the frame at some point. She is a little prima donna and likes to make her cameo appearance. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, you know, if I described her as a cis or as a transgender dog or a trans species dog, I guess is more accurate. Mm -hmm. It would make no sense. People would look at me like I was absurd. Here's my trans species dog making an appearance. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how absurd, really, the use of the word cis and trans are. Um, it really undermines the integrity of what it means to be a woman. You know, those and, and this is something that both of you are, are more English educators than I am. You can talk about how parts of speech matter. But we talk about tall women and, and short women and kind women and strong women. Those are all women. But when we talk about a trans woman, we're talking about a man. Absolutely. And the, the, the opposition has once again taken or continues to take the language and manipulate it in such a way that it seems normal for these, these inaccurate words to be used and, and people are not aware. So this is what we need to do. We need to make them aware that this is, there's nothing more than just there is only a woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you read articles about transgender identified people, even the three of us, we're pretty deep in this issue and we're pretty aware of, of what's going on, how the language is being obfuscated, how the activists are manipulating things. And yet, I don't know about the two of you, but when I read an article about a trans person, I have to really focus and really think, okay, Mm -hmm. Is this a man or is this a woman? The pronouns that are being used, is this, oh, this there's your dog. trans species dog. <laughs> my trans species dog. <laughs> I knew she was coming. <laughs> yeah, you gave us warning. She's very sweet. All cats like to Zoom bomb. They really do. I it's see, you know, I don't see a lot of dogs Zoom bombing. Well, I bet if they identified as cats, they would. They would. Maybe, maybe so. Maybe. But anyway, when I read these articles, it's really difficult to follow what's actually mm -hmm. happening. And I think that's by intention. This mm -hmm. part of this is about destabilizing long held understandings of what it means to be a man, to be a woman. We've known for millennia that there are women and there are men, and that is it. Now there's a continuum of how people express their femininity or their masculinity. But trans men are women and trans women are men. And we need to start using that language. We need to say, this is a woman who identifies as a man. This is a man who identifies as a woman because saying trans man and trans woman just obfuscates it. And I would even go so, so further as to say not, I mean, we have to use language so that people understand what we're saying. But I, I push back on the idea that they're even identified because- <laughs> Um, I can't identify as a cat. I have no idea what it's like to mm -hmm. be a cat. I don't have a clue. I can kind of surmise based on their, um, how they act, but I'm a woman and that's, that's, that's what I can be. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I mean, we have to use language because this ideology has infiltrated so deeply, but I think that, um, you know, I, I would suggest that, that these are people who believe they identify or they believe mm -hmm. that they're acting or they are pretending or they're predators mm -hmm. using this. And one of the things that I notice is that, and I used to do this too, it's taken me a while to sort of understand how insidious this ideology is and why we have to push back. And when I first got into this, I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes I would use their pronoun, their preferred pronouns. And um, I would use the term trans man, trans woman, because I thought I was being kind. And what I'm realizing now is that that kindness and compassion is being used to manipulate us. And this is something predators do. This is something that this is abusive behavior mm -hmm. where we're told that we are hurting their feelings if we don't use the language that they want us to, 
Well, they are systematically undermining our basic rights and protections. And even the, the definition of what it is to be a woman, we're basically erasing the entire concept of, of what it means to be a woman. We're no longer able to identify as ourselves because mm -hmm. we're being told what it means to be a woman. And the term cisgender, especially, I find so offensive because I don't know a single woman who 100% feels comfortable as a woman, especially women um, who are sexually objectified, who are mm -hmm. sexualized, you know, it's, I, you know, it's uncomfortable sometimes being a woman, and that's part of being a woman. And to suggest that only those who are 100% comfortable being a woman are really women is sort of degrading the very experience of womanhood. I think you're absolutely right. And, and I can't tell what you two feel like being a woman. I, all I know is my experience of being a woman. So how can a man say he is a woman? Because and he has no idea what, what it's like. It's a lie. I was recently referred to by a friend, you know, as, as very cis, that oh. I'm very cis because, you know, I guess because I have long hair and I wear makeup and earrings. Um, when I was in, I think my freshman year of high school, I had very short hair. I got a very short haircut. I liked to wear um, collared shirts and, and jackets. Like my, my high school picture, my freshman year, I've got a corduroy jacket and I have very short hair. And I don't think I wore any makeup at that time. Does that mean I was not cis at that time, that I wasn't a woman, that I wasn't a female? You know, now that I'm older, I want to have long hair. It's because when I was little, my mom always got my hair cut short and it was traumatic for me. And I decided when I'm old enough, I'm having my hair long. So that's why I have long hair. Well, and Marie, the reason I have my hair long, I would prefer my hair short. I much prefer, I really enjoyed it when it was super short after I shaved it. It cute on you too. But... I live in Northern Utah and it's incredibly cold in the winter and the hair <laughs> keeps my neck warm yeah. and I'm incredibly light skinned. And in the summer, I get horrible sunburns if I don't have hair protecting my neck. Mm. So for me, it's very utilitarian. It's not because I identify as a woman or because <laughs> I'm embracing my femininity. It's because my, my hair protects me. My hair is very useful. Um, and so it's insulting to suggest that, you know, I'm a cis woman because I have longer hair when in yeah. fact, you know, I'm, it's not how it doesn't have anything to do with my identity. Well, and I'll say too, this is revealing a little bit about myself. I really like long hair on men. I find <laughs> guys with long hair, I think are kind of hot. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, I look at a guy who has long hair and I don't think, oh, that long hair makes him a woman. Oh, he's very exactly. feminine. Um, no, no, I don't think so at all. That's a really good point. In fact, some of, um, yeah, I've, I've run into some men who are incredibly masculine who have longer hair. And again, yeah. it's, you know, it's distilling the essence of what it means to be a biological male or female to these um, absurd, regressive sex based stereotypes um, that are really offensive and that are used to um, uh, really restrict people's expression. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, I think we're just asking, um, I've noticed that, uh, you know, it's increasingly I'm hearing and, and maybe it's just that I'm more sensitive to it, but, but people who are fighting against the transgender ideology, when they use these terms, they're actually helping the very mm -hmm. thing that they're fighting against. And, and I think a lot of times it's even subconscious, they're not realizing they're doing it, but by accepting that language, they are manipulating us. And they're, again, they're, they're, um, slowly um, kind of seeping into our culture and our society mm -hmm. and our, when you can control the language, you control society. And that's, I was just shocked when I was hearing some, um, some legislative hearings and I was hearing these legislators who are, you know, they're um, members of the church of Latter-day Saints, Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints here in Utah. And they were using terms like transgender girl, these transgender ladies, these transgender women. And I'm sure they thought they were being kind, but what they were doing is that they were appropriating womanhood. They're taking it away from real women, from actual women, from biological women. And again, the fact that I have to use those kind of qualifiers now mm -hmm. show how successful they've been at appropriating womanhood. Yeah, I think it's important. Go ahead, May. Oh, exactly. Just just the fact that we have to to clarify what type 
you know, say we are biological women mm -hmm. and there's nothing else but a woman. There, there's no other kind of woman. Yeah. And I think it's important that we give people the right language. You know, we need to call women, women and men, men. Um, I don't use the term cis at all in any way. I find the whole term offensive and it's based entirely on stereotypes as we've seen. Um, so I don't even use the word cis, I won't use it. Well, thanks for this discussion. I think that um, it, it really is helpful to have um, women who look very feminine perhaps, but who, who don't necessarily feel like 100% comfortable with all aspects of femininity. Um, boy, I really struggled growing up because I didn't conform. Um, I, I hated shopping. Um, I didn't like looking at girly magazines and reading romance novels. I didn't fit in. Um, I didn't want to be cartwheeling on the field. I wanted to be aggressively playing soccer and kicking shins and winning the game. You know, all of these things, which are um, not, not, not um, adhering to sex-based stereotypes. And any girl who is a child today is now being told that it's because she's not actually female. And that is so offensive and so dangerous and just harmful. Um, these these non-conforming, and even the non-conforming drives me crazy. Yeah. Yes. Is, you know, and, and, and the thing that's most concerning to me is that I, I'm now hearing terms like women in all their diversity, which sounds like it's embracing the idea that we don't have to be conforming to these regressive sex-based stereotypes, but what it means is embracing men as women. Exactly. And letting them in our spaces. Mm -hmm. 